I like finding young comics mm. that I like that are exciting to me because, you know, that's the best part about it is to like be inspired and hopefully keep evolving and changing because mm. like obviously I don't want to fade into obsolescence yeah. and I think it's important to to see what's out there because I've also, I've criticized comics who are famous who have specials where they are doing a joke that's like, what if, how come we never see ghosts in roller skates? You know, and it's like, what? That's an open mic joke that that guy did. So you have to like go to open mics and be on these shows with the young people and see what they're talking about. And I'm not saying mimic them, but just know that it exists so you're not out here being like, who eats ass, you know? Or Hey, Drunk Babies, my name is Marcos Gonzalez, and this is Inside the Funny or Die Vault. We're gonna take a look back at classic Funny or Die videos and talk internet comedy and culture from then to now. Uh, my next guest is a comedian and writer. Her latest special, If You Didn't Want Me Then, was named one of Vulture's 10 best comedy specials of 2023. Beth Stelling, welcome to the Funny or Die Vault. Thank you for having me. Of course, and before we jump to a bunch of questions about your career, we gotta tackle the video you chose. Pearl the Landlord. The oh, Pearl. OG video. So for those at home who haven't seen it or haven't seen it in a while, watch it, obviously. My landlord, Pearl. Hi, Pearl. You don't have to raise your voice. You pay you! I can give you half. You pay little bitch. Hey, don't talk to me like that, okay? Will Ferrell is visited by, land, by his landlord, Pearl, because he's late on rent. She's a two-year-old, and um, she curses him out. Um, this kid, of course, was played by Adam McKay's two-year-old daughter. One of, the, historically, the greatest videos of all the internet, mm -hmm. and the first Funny or Die video. It was the first? It was the first, right? Wow. I'm right on that, right? Hell yeah. I was getting like, I never know anything. Um, <laughs> it was the first one, and I have to ask you, why did you choose it? I think it was probably one of the first internet videos I witnessed where I was like, this is ultimate comedy. I mean, it had to have been, did we know the year it came out? 2007. Okay, so I was yeah. in college, in a dorm oh, wow. probably. Or actually, yeah. maybe I was in a house by then. Um, <laughs> and I, I feel, I, you know you try to remember like who showed it to you? Yeah. I do feel like it was one of my roommates, Jamie. She, was, she also introduced me to Grape Stomping Lady, a classic. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> Perfect impression, thank you so much. Um, and so I just remember this to me was just, I was like, I, will I ever be that funny? Yeah. I mean, Will Ferrell's an icon, obviously. Adam McKay was, at that point in time, I didn't know who he was. It's his daughter that plays it. This video was so influential, I was like, if I have a kid, I will name it Pearl. And that lasted for a while, until, for real? until recently, when my eggs dried up. But I did, no, I, got, I do have some eggs actually over on ice in Beverly Hills in case anybody was worried. <laughs> Straight real, to camera, they're in Beverly Hills. A real rag yeah. to Rich's tail. See, I remember watching this video and being like, I, I like obviously you know Will Ferrell from SNL, and I, and I felt like yeah. internet videos at the time when I was watching them, I was like, oh, it's just like everyday people doing internet videos. And then it's like, I, I don't know, it gave like clout to internet culture in a weird way where that's I was like, true. oh, someone famous is also doing what it's we're trying to do. Sure, that, that, yeah. I think that's a good point. It's like, oh my gosh, he wants to play with us yeah. in a way. But the, at the time too, it was, it was very like, you have to remember, this was like not mm. everybody was doing videos. There was still some sort of like, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to this say. This is so early days. Yeah, I'm trying to think about who was in my liked videos. It was like mail yeah. order comedy, which was like ended up being the workaholic guys. And it was just there weren't as there wasn't as much to see. Well, that's what I think it was like a skill set you had to learn, right? Like not a lot yeah. of people knew or didn't have a camera, first of all, or knew how to edit or knew how to throw it up. Like there was a lot of like there was like a learning curve. This was also a time yeah. where I was still able to suspend my disbelief. Yeah. I mean, I've been doing stand up now for like 17 years. And I don't even know, I guess writing for TV, I don't know, the last seven or so years. And it's like, you watch things differently. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not that I'm jaded, I love comedy, but it, I, I do a lot of punch up. So it's like, mm -hmm. I'm watching something and going, how can I make that funnier? As opposed yeah. to sitting there and being like, <laughs> you know, yeah, you like, take this I in. see it yeah. and I'm like, that's funny. And what can we do better? So I feel like this yeah. was a golden time in my comedy life where I'm still being like inspired and I think what I'm laughing at in the video then is very different than what I'm laughing at now. Yeah. And when I rewatched it, I would say first laugh for me probably didn't come until she screamed, I want my money! Because <laughs> it's like that little kid who's yeah. like just letting it rip, just 
no holds bar. I'm like, and then the second one was probably, I'm just a little buzzed. So I feel like those were my, those were my laughs now. Then I'm sure I was just like, I just see too, I know too much. I see too much now. I'm like, that's his house. I, I'm thinking about how much it costs. (laughs) I'm like, what a great porch, you know, in LA, it's like, you know, one bedroom costs like $1.4 million. So you're like, Hmm, I guess he was doing well. And there were more jobs back then. And I just am sort of like looking at all the details. And even just like how they shot it, like you're saying, you and know, I'm looking at all the angles, cam. how they direct like, it. Uh, uh, yeah, I know. It was you so know. simple. Yeah, it was great. It is crazy to me that Adam McKay was behind it too, and it's like, dude's an Oscar-winning like movie maker now, like movie director, and it's like, yeah, I guess technically that's like his OG OG thing, right? Yeah. Like this little video, and so you said 17 years ago you started stand up, right? Yeah. And that puts us at like pretty much was that 2007, right? No. That's when is I that started dead stand up, on? yeah. So we can basically wow. kind of say that Pearl, the landlord, is my origin story is, uh, into comedy. You like, watched and went straight I to the be improv like and Pearl. was like, it's time. I, I want to name my kid Pearl, but yeah, yeah I, I think also this was during the, t- I'm thinking about what this time was, and I think mm-hmm. it was Dane Cook, I forget, maybe it was Retaliation. Again, that's an album I probably listened to like on the floor of my friend's van and was like dying laughing. Whatever shit on the coats was. Who took a shit on the coats? Whatever that track was and whatever that album was. And then I kind of stepped away from stand-up for a while, like as in wouldn't touch it, wouldn't watch it because I knew I was like, I want to do stand-up. I was very scared of like stealing um, anybody's persona or jokes, or yeah, like not because I'm inclined to do it, because I was like, what comes out of me naturally? I just want to figure out what, what my thing is. What was that process like for you? Like, when were you? Oh my like, god, it took forever. Yeah, but like I, early days, like what was like, like was it just like okay, I'm gonna throw myself into a into it, an it, it open was, mic and just you know, see what speaking happens? of who showed me the video, which was probably Jamie Byersdorfer. Um, she and all my roommates are the reason I ever did stand up because I would come home from class and stand by the TV <laughs> while they're trying to watch it and just like they tell them about my day or whatever. And, you know, they are the ones who are like, you're so funny. You should be a comic. So it was like without my friends encouraging me, I probably wouldn't be a comic because it takes it is scary. I have to remember that it's scary to start because it's not that I'd never have nerves now, but you know, so many people are like, stand up so hard and it's so scary. And it's like, of course I think that about other things and I still have nerves, but it is scary to try it for that first time. Yeah. And the difference between standing by the TV in front of your friends and just talking and making them laugh about your day is very different than going on stage in front of strangers. But typically those first open mics, like what did it look like for me to start? It looked yeah. like me crashing a music open mic in college <laughs> and inviting like 50 of my closest friends and they were all, I killed. They're like dying laughing at me. So I had I had and needed that encouragement, like that win to keep me going. Cause I, I, I'm sure it's human nature, but I don't want to do something I'm bad at. Like, you know, I, I've, I've tried ice, ice hockey once. So, uh, my s- skates could never get tight enough. I was like, I'm not doing that again. So the fact that they came and I killed it, it was like, oh, I could do this maybe. So what was like the next step, right? Like, cause, uh, assuming at, at some point you had to do audiences that people didn't know you, because you had to like keep testing things. Yeah, out. there's all kind. There's so yeah. many waves of stand-up comedy. It's like, you first want all your friends to come because you need that love yeah. and support. Then when you haven't written anything new, you don't want any of them to come because yeah, it's embarrassing. Like, uh, it's thing. disingenuous. Yeah, it's like laugh. a freaking. Yeah. It's you know, it's hard because I had a, I I had a misconception about stand-up that you just make it up. And it would be different every time. And but the truth is, it is requires acting skills, yeah. and is a trick. You know, a joke is a trick. I like the structure of it too. Like I, I don't think like I'm not a stand up, but I remember like, it took me a really long time to watch specials. And then when I started watching them, I started realizing that there's like so much more structure than you realize. Mm-hmm. Like as a, as an audience member, like an everyday audience member, you're like, oh, it's just like a joke and a joke and a joke. And I'm like, no, dude. Like, let's start with a story and then like all of these things will accumulate to like build to a climax that like closes up that story. And I remember being like, this is crazy. Like when I had that sort of epiphany moment as an audience member slash like, cause I write now too, but I'll yeah. not stand up. I was like, damn dude, this is like a true, like it takes so much more than you like realize. Can, yeah, yeah. can. You have that option yeah, to do that. Some people just do a, a podcast. Or, or the stage. crowd work or, yeah. That's <laughs> Some people are thing. really not keeping special. Yeah. Keeping were were special. you, so back then we're like, obviously we were watching videos, you were doing stand up. Were you ever trying to make videos? Did you ever think like, oh, maybe I'll no, cross some of that territory? No, that has always been, yeah. um, I think that's why 
I didn't believe in myself as like a TV writer for mm. so long because I, I get asked, or I did at least, and I occasionally still do, after a show or something, it'll be like, did you write that? And I'm kind of looking around like, who would else would have? <laughs> what, what do you think I am? Yeah. Like Chris Rock? Or that was a bad example. Yeah, but I just ghost, mean, <laughs> it's not my ghostwriter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I just mean like I'm not a famous person that requires a team of writers. Like I, I don't to, like, live such an abnormal out, life yeah. that I'm I'm no longer in touch with reality. So I, I I don't know. I hate to put it into the category of yeah. that doesn't get asked as much to male comics. But yeah. there are times where like, did you write that? But it has happened in my lifetime. Even doing punch up. Um, That's so crazy. <laughs> people. Yeah. Like, yeah, there, there are definitely people's opinions on what you're capable of. Yeah. But um, that was a bit of a tangent I took. I'm sorry. What was the oh, question? Oh, no, you're totally fine. It was about making videos. Like, oh, yeah, uh, okay. If you ever wanted to, or oh, was there a reason so, you didn't? Yeah. Sorry, the reason I went on that tangent was yes. because, yes, I write all my material, and, yes, yeah. I come up with it, and I'm performing it. So, technically, I am a writer, but it didn't feel like that because yeah. it was sort of like I'm just talking about my life, and it felt very verbal. So, mm. at that time, it's like, well, I don't write. I just speak it into existence as opposed to sitting down and so even just the reason I am thankful my first writing job was crashing which was like Judd yeah. Apatow's collab with Pete, Pete Holmes, Holmes yeah. which is about stand-up so I'm thankful for that experience because it made me be like oh no I can be a TV writer yeah and it was like you know writing what I know and stuff but I didn't have the confidence at first to be like I'm a writer mm -hmm. even though I had been at that time for years as a stand-up, again, they are very different things. Mm. But when it comes to making videos, I also never had that confidence. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Even, in, in, and I sort of liked not knowing. Even acting on little things here and there, I mean, it would, would have behooved me to learn, you know? Mm. So you understand like, this is a wide, or you're not in the shot, or you don't have to <laughs> act r real hard. Yeah. Uh, Cause the camera's not on you. You know, yeah. those things would be good to know, but. Sometimes I liked, you know, ignorance is, can, yeah. be, can be bliss. Was there ever like a hesitancy, <clears throat> hesitancy or like a fear because of like, oh, it's once it's online, it's on, you know, like, was that ever a uh, Right, that, that is that a whole into? another aspect of all yeah. of this. And the answer is like early days of stand up, I remember being like, I want to put out this perfect set of mine, but somebody might steal it. And then quickly you're like, nobody wants that. Uh, you can put it out, <laughs> you know, like, I think early days of stand-up, yeah. you're very like precious about your material because you don't have as much, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I think that's still true for me today. Even with like, even when there was Twitter, I was like, I don't know, like pressing send was like a big deal for me. Yeah. So yeah, making things permanent can be scary. I have that fear. Like I, I can't, I'll put things up and like within a minute, I'm like, nobody said anything. I got to take it out. Like, <laughs> it's like such a fast, like my, my friends hate it. They're like, you should have just left that. It was pretty good. Well, and I'm like, nah, dude. <laughs> 45 seconds passed. Not a single soul liked it. It's gone forever now. Well, podcasting <laughs> even was scary for me initially. Because oh, yeah, stand up is, for me, yeah. I am a, I am a type A comic. I'm, I'm definitely like a yeah. control freak or, you know, so stand up, I can control for the most mm -hmm. part. I've written it. I, I, decide whether I put it in a special or commit it to mm -hmm. tape or whenever it's ready to be seen. And things are so drastically different now. Like that is not how the way wor the That's world improv. works. Improv scares the shit out of me. I can't do, I'm like, but it's also like I'm OCD. So it's like, I'll, I'll be in the scene doing something. I go, that was the worst version of that. Like it's, it's yeah. too quick for me. But no, same thing with podcasts. I I've wanted never... to save improv. Like, yeah. like as in, I, I was totally comfortable with silences in my own standup. Yeah. But if I was doing a scene, and there was like silence, I'd be like, bah, 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 bah. you know, I have to like chat, you know, just <laughs> trot out and be like, everything's course. fine, we've got this. Yeah. You know, as opposed to being able to play in it with other people too. Yeah, even like, I didn't even know to justify things forever. I, like I would do something in improv and people be like, what was that? And I'd be like, what? Like, <laughs> I'd just be like, what, what are you talking about? And it was like, it's always been a nightmare. But no, podcast is the same thing where I've never hosted this. Uh, this is all new to me too. Yeah. But this is all really fun because I just like talking about comedy in general and like people's paths and like yeah. what they did. So I try to keep it loose because it's fun. Well, um, that's the thing. There's yeah. so many different ways into it now. Yeah. I don't know. And even for podcasts, I took, I started one right on time this year <laughs> um, <laughs> with my best friend Mo Welch. And it took, her sort of even twisting my arm to do it. Cause it's like uncontrolled and mm -hmm. like I can be on here with you and just chat. But when it's like up to me and I'm like putting something out there, yeah. I'm like, it's not good enough. 
Because for stand-up, for me, I, I'm like, there will be laughs every possible second. Yeah. So then to be like, but pe people oh, want to yeah. look. People watch people brushing their teeth. I mean, I mean that's a whole other thing. Through this stand-up thing, do you ever get worried? I know you mentioned this like maybe a couple minutes ago, but it was like um, people stealing jokes. Like, uh -huh. is that was that ever a fear? Like, was that ever like a, has that happened to you? I, have you had like, a terrible yeah. story? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't have a terrible story about someone like purposely Did taking you something. Them, though, because that's like the fun part. I'm yeah. Very curious. Okay, hell yeah. Let's hear I it. mean, <laughs> so I would say it was more an issue with. Um, a taping, actually. It was the the uh, first season of the stand-ups on Netflix, mm -hmm. um, which was with their first series of half-hour specials. Mm -hmm. And yeah, basically, they did three uh, a night, and they would switch up the order, you know, who goes first, second, third. And I was on with another comic, and I went second after them, and. M they vetted all of it was the thing, or at least they said. Yeah. So then, and we kind of ran them at the improv, but there was a joke in the person before me set that was like extremely close to mine now. Oh, weird. And I was like, okay, and I did it so my, so when I followed, it didn't hit as hard. And then we switched places, mine hit, and then she decided to sort of say to the crowd, like, hey, great minds think alike. Just pretend like you didn't hear Beth's first and laugh at mine. So uh, oh, we wow. we chatted in between because you have to, you know the audience yeah. change over, and it's so that that's less of a scenario of like you've stolen this from me. But there are times where you can thing, feel yeah, yeah. protective of your material, and it's like, well, I've been doing that for like a year and a half, so yeah. I know it's mine. Um, versus, Dang, that's tricky. yeah, it can get tricky. Yeah. Or who's seen you on the scene and then tag somebody else up because they forgot who they saw it from, you know, mm. or whatever it is. But I, I I don't have a scenario like some comics do where it's like this person stole the bit from me very clearly. I mean, that I know of. Oh, that's not true. I did a podcast once with a young comic and she just blatantly admitted to me. She's like, I did your joke at an open mic the other night. I was like, oh what? yeah? How'd it do? And she's like, you killed. I was like, okay. Wait, that's wild. Typically not how that works, but good to know that it stands the test of a different human being. How do you feel about the sort of like comedy from when you started to like the comedians of now, like this sort of like, like how does like the internet play into like TikToks of it all? Right. Like how does that? Yeah. You know, I when asked to like come talk to students or like maybe, yeah. uh, you know, about a, a stand up class or something like that. Which I don't teach, yeah. but if I'm asked to come and I try to be helpful and stuff, but I'm never gonna be like this scared straight comic that's like you have to tour and get good. Can you <laughs> never? Because yeah. the truth is, you can go viral for like blowing your nose real hard. And then sell out all the helium comedy clubs across the country, and then people show up to see you, and you have nowhere near forty-five minutes to an hour of material to present. And then comics will love to be like, "See, they're not a real comic; they won't withstand the test of time." And it's like, no, their fans will come out and see them one more time, yeah. just to see if they figured it out, or just to be near them, or whatever it is. So I'm never going to be like. Here's what you have to do to make it, because obviously we know there's so many different paths to making it, um, or whatever that means to you. So it's like, I never want to be a hater on TikTok or Vine, because the truth is, is like, if it worked for me, then I'd love it. Yeah. But I don't want to do that. I don't want to live. I don't want to yeah. live online constantly. I don't want to invent something that people. <laughs> Mimic a trend. Yeah, yeah I don't. Do you, do you utilize it though? Like, is it helpful? Like when you tour and things like that, does it like help? Because there's some people are like, oh, I it'll boost it. ticket sales. Okay, you hate it. Okay. Yeah, I hate it. In fact, I'm so, I'm so used to like creating a special, like mm -hmm. you talked about, mm -hmm. that now things have changed so much. Like feedback is like we're looking uh, instead of like old days where HBO would be like, hey, we want to do your hour special, and here's your offer, mm -hmm. and then I show up and I do that. And then they put it up. Yeah. Even my last special, I filmed it and produced it myself and then licensed it to Netflix. This is like the beginning of the end for me. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy uh -oh. it. Um, <laughs> and now the feedback is not like, it, it, this is going to sound, I, the last thing I want to do is sound bitter. This is getting very industry oh, no, no, talk for whoever is listening. But this is. No, the, I love it. I love This is the reality of, yeah. of stand up. So like you're saying, Vulture named that, 
one of the best specials of the year. The New York Times listed it up there with like Gaffigan and Marin's my last special. If you didn't want me then on Netflix. Um, <laughs> and I can't get another special right now. Like I have a new hour that I really like and I ran it at the Netflix as a joke fest and you know, the feed worker was like, this is incredible. My People are like, this is my favorite hour of yours. And then when it comes time to like sell it or try to get someone to put it on their platform, it's like, we're booked until 2026. And the feed, generally the exact wow. feedback is, we're looking for people who do huge numbers on social media, TikTok, Yikes, YouTube, dude. Instagram. And it's like, and, or people who will bring new subscribers to our platform or people yeah. like who are already maybe giants on there like Gaff again. And so it's like, I don't have, I mean, and then so the, yeah. the, the answer from whatever you want to call it, my team, management and agent is like, well, you could shoot it again yourself and chop it up and put it on TikTok. And I'm like, why don't you do that? Do have that. an abortion? You know, yeah. I'm sort of like, I don't want to do that because that's not what I grew it into. I would like to present it as a whole. And it sounds yeah. like so archaic to be like, I made, but, but that's, that's like what it is to come form. see me on the road is like, yeah. I don't, I'm never going to ask you what you do for a living. I don't care who you're dating. If you'd like to come be entertained for an hour of time, that's my job. So you could buy a ticket and then yeah. I will present to you something that you will hopefully enjoy for one hour because you've paid to come see me yeah. and you have a babysitter. Um, <laughs> but it's like, this is a conversation I've had with a few people where it's like, I think that a lot of times people lose that like human component of like the actual live performance. You know what I mean? Like the actual like, Oh, like yes, I have all these jokes, but I some will hit harder with different audiences, and sometimes that brings out something better. And it's like when you're on the internet, it's like it's there, but like you don't know what people are laughing at. They're just commenting at the end of it. I don't know where where the laugh line is. I don't know what they found funny. I don't, you know, it's like yeah, it's a bummer because it's like the the human connection is why I think the art form is such a fun like has stood the test of time type of art form. Yeah, but it is like a bummer, you know. Yes, and I'm just sort of like. What are we doing? I mean, yeah. how could I possibly live my life and then chop up every special I've done and put it into little clippies yeah. and then have people be like, yeah, this went viral. And then I go, see Amazon and Hulu? I went viral. Yeah. You know, and then what? I mean, who? Yeah. truthfully, I miss gatekeepers. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, can that's we That's the first. I don't think we've heard that yet. <laughs> I miss the gatekeepers. Yeah. Can we have a tastemaker that's not looking for analytics? Yeah. There were so many places that used to like find people. Like that was like the fun of it. It's like, oh my God, this person I would have never otherwise found until they were on this program. And now they're like the most beloved character performer or stand up or this or that because it was kind of like, look at them come out of obscurity. Like they would have never, you know, I, I miss those days. I think yeah. those days were sick. Yeah, um, or just yeah. like, I don't know, allowing someone to grow. I think like yeah. in that same vein, it's like, we always talk about how there hasn't been like a woman late night host. And yeah, that's wild. Yeah, of course you have these versions, right? Of yeah. like Chelsea Handler or, you know, Joan Rivers had a, had a moment. Samantha Bee had like a thing. You're right, but those are, and again, I'm not say, saying they weren't doing what they mm -hmm. wanted, but it's still not the classic like sit, yeah, it wasn't you like know, Letterman there's anything. like three people named Jim, you know, and a John, two Johns or something. Jimmy but John, yeah. <laughs> it's, there hasn't been a woman sitting to, to do that part of it, really. They did yeah. pop in and guest host and, and all these things. And I'm sort of like, sure, it could be, maybe there's not a willingness to do it or something. There, I, I don't mm -hmm. know what it is. And, and maybe it, I guess all that to say, it's like, to me, I'm going, remember when Conan was on and it was like really the beginnings of Conan, probably mm -hmm. back in the days of what we're talking about, Pearl. Um, and people were like, this is weird and I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. And here we are 20 years you know, later, and it's like, it's Conan. Everybody knows Conan. He's beloved. And so it's like. And that was even weirder. Who like, are, who are we extreme. not shove? What woman are we not? Can we not afford to shove down people's throats for mm. 20 years until they're Beth? You know, Beth. Yeah. You know, so it's like, you, we don't really allow someone to grow in that way. And it typically isn't allowed of a, of, of a woman. To, to just be like, well, let's see what she does here. Let yeah. her let her fail for a while. And that's another thing I see on the road. You know, it, it's getting better, there, it ebbs and flows, but like, you know, if I'm at a comedy club 
which at this point it's like, I guess I'm thankful that I can still tour mm -hmm. <laughs> and not be pushed out, I guess, by people who can sell tickets in three minutes because they shot in a diaper on camera. <laughs> I'm like, the month will be like, do, 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 woman, you know, often. And now there have been shifts in that for sure. Mm -hmm. But I all have, I will still sometimes have comedy club owners be like, we want to get more female headliners in here. Yeah. And it's like, cool, well then do that. Because it's hard to get good at headlining and there's no other way to do it than to do it. Yeah. It's just sort of like people's bias, which I understand, it's America. It's, uh, our, we're based in racism and patriarchy and capitalism. So it's like most people, if they could think about it, before you get on a plane, if you got to secretly vote who your pilot was, everybody's picking a white man. I'm not saying I would, <laughs> but I'm just saying like, because yeah. I'm better than know. everybody. But it's like, I'm, yeah. people would secretly vote their bias. And so it's like, a lot of comedy clubs are safer having a white guy yapping mm. than let's give this woman a try, even if she is gonna fail yeah, or whatever it is. So I'm really curious, like when you were starting, was there like a female comedian that like sort of like, was inspiring you or one that you were like, damn, I want to like do it like them? Was there anybody that kind of like drew your attention that way? Mm, I mean, I'm trying to think of like my early inspirations in comedy were probably like my were movies as a kid. That yeah. like that was my identifying identifying what, what I found funny. So like Whoopi Goldberg and Chris Rock and Robin Williams, mm -hmm. Jim Carrey. Um, those were like the movies I remember like latching onto and loving stand up. I just wasn't watching and I didn't know about it. So honestly it was like, I remember the first com, like somebody burned me a Jim Gaffigan CD. I remember, which I was like, this guy's really good. And then the Dane Cook one killed me, which is so funny. You know, I should have reached out. He might <laughs> help me. <laughs> and when you did start like touring, was there like, obviously you had obstacles to overcome. And like you were saying, like it'd be like guy, 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 girl, you know? Yeah. W did you ever like, like, commiserate or speak to someone about it? Like, was there another female there, comedian? My, that was like, my early take of that, yeah. whenever I did like an interview, yeah. like, cause every question would always be like, what's it like to be a woman in comedy? Yeah. And I would always make a conscious choice to say, I love it, it's so easy. <laughs> because I yeah. wanted other women to do it, as yeah. opposed to being like, it is really hard and people do pull on my pigtails and spank my butt so hard it takes my breath away in the back of a comedy club. Mm. And I didn't ask for that, you know? Mm. Or I'm made mm. to be in weird, uncomfortable car rides with a man um, doing a gig an hour outside of Chicago. Mm. So it's like, I wanted people to like want to do it when maybe that was doing a disservice to what it would be like for them, mm. potentially. But I would say it's, what a, it's so great because even when I, Oftentimes in Chicago, there was like only a handful of us. So if there's like five shows going, mm -hmm. there was one woman on a show, but you each had a show. So there was like plenty of stage time because you were being the little odd one out on whatever the show was. The beauty of the internet, of course, is that like, you know, in the same way I'm saying it's, there's so many people and so many voices, I still do feel like, of course, like I don't want to be bitter. There is room for everybody. I still believe that, you know? Um, and it's introduced us to all kinds of different voices, yeah. which is cool too. Are there any like you're excited about recently? Like ones that you've like either come across at a comedy club or like through TikTok ones that Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I've been going to, like there's this new venue called The Crow in Santa Monica and they oh, do cool. a really good job of trying to bring in all different kinds of voices. Yeah. And um, I found this comic Nina Wynn that was really funny. Mm. Um, I have like a, monthly show at Largo and so I usually try to bring a new voice onto oh, cool. it that people don't know about so well, um, yeah. and yeah sorry there's like a hair somewhere there you got it. in my eye <laughs> there you go. um I start tweaking <laughs> it's, it's hitting um uh and Thenya from she calls herself Thenya from Kenya she's another person I found I like finding young comics yeah. that I like that are exciting to me because you know that's the best part about it is to like be inspired and hopefully keep evolving and changing. Mm -hmm. Cause like, obviously I don't want to fade into obsolescence. Yeah. And I think it's important to, to see what's out there. Cause I've also, I've criticized comics who are famous, who have specials where they are doing a joke. That's like, what if 
how come we never see ghosts in roller skates? You know, and it's like, what? That's an open mic joke that that guy did. So you have to like go to open mics and be on these shows with the young people and see what they're talking about. And I'm not saying mimic them, but just know that it exists. So you're not out here being like, who eats ass? You know, or whatever. <laughs> so to say go back, I know you, you got it like started in Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. And then you obviously ended up out here. Um, can you walk me through like sort of how you got from there to here? Yeah. Um, and, and sort of what was that, what that pathway was? Like what brought you? It was my there. mom's Mercury Sable, 02. Nice. Oh, literally the car? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> she called it the uh, sable tooth tiger. <laughs> she kills. And thank goodness it was like her 60th birthday. She was getting herself yeah. a new car, and that's what enabled me. Because I didn't have, living in Chicago, I just had a bike. Yeah. Someday. You got I it? I got it. Hell yeah. The hair has been caught. Dude, it was up in there, huh? Yeah. Goodbye, hair. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> um... So the sable tooth tiger. Yeah, so I was in Chicago yes. for four years, and I was like 26, and I was like, yeah. wow, I'm getting old. I better do yeah. it or, you know, shit or get off the pot. I have to move to New York or yeah. L.A. And at the time, Just for Laughs Festival was was still oh, pretty yeah. potent, and it's... R.I.P. or maybe not. Yeah, not, definitely, I think It is for sure? Yeah. Okay, cool. Well. But I am grateful to that yeah. festival because I auditioned maybe three years in a row and didn't make it, yeah. and then... Fourth year, I got, um, you know, secretly named a new face of comedy, which was in 2011. And, you know, their whole goal is to, like, find the next big thing or whatever. And so there was this underlying um, sort of question of me, are you going to New York or L.A.? Now, they're not forcing you to do that, but at the time, like, I was, yeah, I was, I mean, I was like, well, I must, yeah. you know. So I was like, yeah. I'm moving to LA. And then just by saying that, I was like, well, I guess I gotta. Yeah, now it's time. Because I remember yeah. it was like Kyle Kinane was like, New York is a $10,000 detour. Go, yeah. and then also there was a vibe of. <laughs> that's, a gr that's great advice, yeah. I think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and everybody was like, where are you gonna, go where you'll be happy as a human being. Yeah. And so I thought, I've, I'm from Ohio, I survived Chicago winter, you know, yeah. year after year. It was probably like the, what they call it, the blizzard of, I don't know. There was you some lived sort of one of these two. Yeah, there was some sort of super blizzard. When or... I lived in Boston, it was the, we had a snow apocalypse where it snowed yeah, it for something. eight straight months, and the state ran out of salt, so they couldn't even melt the <laughs> snow. So and I like I had to take the I think it's like the T over to school, and because there was you couldn't get rid of the ice on the tracks, we just couldn't go to school. Cool. And they were like, you have to come on weekends to like make up for all the days, because I'm not gonna say the name of the school, but the school was like the bare minimum to be an accredited institution. Boston University. No, I'm, I'm not say anything it okay. wasn't about university but I, I mean i know i found out and then i was like what so then we started having <laughs> to take like weekend classes it was a whole thing but i also lived through a snow apocalypse and it was very much the reason i ended up here instead of new york yeah and my brother was in new york so it felt safer but i was like nah dog like no, I'm, going... I'm not living through eight months of snow again in my life mm -mm. i'm done here <laughs> um yeah my class was ali wong gerard carmichael oh, ron that's... funches oh like okay star started yeah very cool and i you know a lot of people kind of considered me the most successful of that bunch. <laughs> and uh, I had a couple friends out here that were nice enough to let me crash on their couch Crazy. as I was looking for a place out here. Yeah. And I eventually, I, I, fi I found a, a studio and I got a job like right away. Cause I, I moved with probably the most money I ever had in my life, which was like $1,200. Mm. And um, I, I think it's shocking that I thought that would be okay yeah. uh, to, to live out here. In fact, I got a job right away at Intelligentsia Coffee in Pasadena. Oh, hell yeah. Because um, I had managed a little coffee shop in Chicago called Dollop. Mm. And I was, I was almost disappointed. I was like, Ugh, I wanted to chill for a bit, you know, when I first got out here. And I needed that job immediately, obviously, because mm. it was extremely expensive. And then I got a babysitting job. And so I was basically working in, the, in an errand job. So I was working mornings um, until late afternoon and doing shows at night. That was my early days in, in LA, um, kind of burning the candle at both ends. And then I couldn't afford that studio and it was covered in roaches. And I also oh was sleeping God. on an air mattress. So Jeez. it was like, I don't it's know like if you've ever tried to bone on an air mattress. It doesn't work. Yeah, it just falls apart. Yeah. yeah, and then also you turn the lights on and the roaches. <laughs> there was like oh roaches God. in the shower with me. Oh my. Yeah. 
And then I remember renting it to my friend Stan, who I worked with. Yeah. And he, was, he never said anything? He was chill with it? I told him about the it's roaches. It's like a, you gave him your curse. It's like a, you passed the curse on. Him and his girlfriend Claire were living there. Yeah. The rent was 800 so they need to pay 400 each. Oh, that's great. Yeah. You learn to have a couple of thousand roommates when you're paying 800 Oh, I've, I have it. Yeah. So, I but that was still too expensive for me um, because my paychecks were like yeah. 300 bucks every two weeks. Oh, dang. And so I moved into a dining room in Los Feliz. Cool. On chandelier, all of it. And lived there for $656 a month. Yeah. And I kept that for years, even when I was on writing on Crashing. When you don't come from money, it's very difficult to like think. Want to spend more. No, just, or just to yeah. think you're going to ever be okay. So yeah. I was just squirreling away that money living in the in the dining room. So you were like truly, like essentially crashing for most yeah. of the time you got here and then you got to crashing. What was that like transition from like, because it is like two different jobs. Like you went from doing stand up to now, yeah. you're in a writer's room. Yeah. And what was that like? There was a yeah. moment, speaking back to like, yeah. you know, am I worried about people stealing my jokes as a stand up? Yeah. That's been less of a worry. I, I, you know, yeah. some people have uh, said to me, like, oh, this girl is kind of doing you, or, yeah. you know. Oh, like the persona. Yeah. yeah, but I think that's an honor, you know. Yeah. And um, and I don't even know if I believe it. I'm not saying they're lying to me. I'm just sort of yeah. like, what? Even even still when Young Comics are like, you're my favorite. I'm like, me? That's yeah. very sweet. And who? I, I don't nobody. You know, so, so. That doesn't bother me as much. Obviously, if somebody takes your people have sent me yeah. TikToks of like a okay. joke of mine that's from my HBO special, and it's like a similar-ish, and I'm sort of like, HBO didn't promote that. There's no way they're stealing my joke. You know what I mean? Nobody's seen that. So I mean, you'd be surprised. People do anything for the clout. It's just like a real thing. Well, that's the other thing. Yeah. Like, think about all the old comics who aren't on TikTok, and people are just doing their jokes that they'll never yeah. see. I remember, like, I, because I, I came up, I had friends, like, got famous from Vine, and I remember, like, they'd make a Vine. And those are timestamps. Like, you'd see what it's posted. Six months later, someone would make the exact Vine. Like, frame by frame, exact Vine. See, and then they would get hate and be like, what, you stole this from this guy, because they were more famous. This is annoying. And he's like, you can see the date. How is it? <laughs> How are you? This you know? is my worst nightmare. This yeah. is enough. This is why I am always thinking about quitting. Yeah. I can't, I don't have it in me to be this cheese dick all the time. I yeah. can't. Bring it like that. I, 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 in fact, sometimes it bothers me that me delivering a joke like normal, and then if I'm like, and deliver yeah. it like that, and they laugh more, I'm like, I fucking hate you guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I want you to just come with me on the ride, and I know that seems, I love yeah. my audiences, by the way. I do really love them. Yeah. I just mean, why? Sometimes it bothers me what the masses love, because it seems yeah. so fake to me. And I think that's like the trouble with so much on the internet. And like you're saying, people just mimicking it. How how can you live with yourself? Well, the mimic thing is crazy, but do you also think it's like attention span at some point too? Like people want to be just like constantly like new thing, new thing, new thing, because yeah. now they're just so used to a program to being like, all right, five seconds, five seconds, five. And then it's like, well, when you have like these long winded jokes, or you have like a structure like we were talking about. You just called me long winded. Not I'm you. Just, I'm, I'm saying <laughs> in general. You know, just like, kidding. When you have these jokes, I like, am. Takes but yeah, forever. But when jokes like cost, like you know, they have a lot of parts, or like we were saying about like structure, where it's like, okay, well, this is gonna build to something here. Like, is there a fear that's like, oh, I'm just losing people because they don't, they're not used to this kind of stuff anymore. They're like, they want like someone to just be like, oh, I yeah. farted, it. and then you know, walk over to the other room, like here's slime. You know, it's like, and it's just like a constant. <laughs> And don't Cycle get me wrong, I love yeah. the here's fart, he, I farted here slime videos. I'm like, <laughs> Those are huge these I, days. Honestly, like, think about the things that have made me laugh. Like, I love people falling. I love people yeah. getting scared. I love the fact that I can watch all of that yeah. on my phone. It's very fun. Yeah. I'm often, okay? But I guess it's just sort of like, that's when I'm like, should I give up? Because it's, it's like, I'm obsolete. Like, it doesn't really matter anymore. And And I... Maybe just accept that yeah. I'm not needed. But do you think that maybe it comes in waves? Like maybe we just are, like, because Vine did exist before TikTok. It was essentially the same thing. Yeah. And that died off and people wanted longer things or more like, you know, extensive True. content. There was a huge boom in television where people were watching like hour longs instead of, ha you know, it's like, I feel like there, it's this weird shift where we just happen to be like right now in that Vine right. shift again where it's like, ah, I just want to watch stuff while I'm sitting on the toilet. You know, it's like, and I'm like, yeah. all right, that's sitting fair. Sitting on the toilet. Okay. Sitting on the toilet. <laughs> I and feel then slime. like, and that's the so, so then the ant and slime. Yeah. 
the That's answer the is obviously, and what I also say to, yeah. to the youngins is like, obviously the key is to enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. You know, my goal isn't like, and I must go viral this year or yeah, else. I and I know people like that, and I, I love them, but God, dear God, Well, I think that, like I said, yeah. and I meant it, and I realized the hypocrisy, I'm very self-aware too, to, mm -hmm. to my own detriment, which is I don't like TikTok unless it were helping me, but yeah. I'm not feeding it, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, if, and I've had, when my special came out, I had somebody, paid somebody to like put my clips like mm -hmm. they tell you to, but, you know, there's like this strange area of authenticity that's also required yeah. where it needs to kind of like come from you and just like putting clips out is good. Like the reason I even engage with it at all is because like I do want to reach the people who would enjoy me. That's yeah. it. I'm not over here like, and my goal is arenas. Wouldn't it be ideal though if it was like, you do your thing and someone you don't pay or even know is just finding their favorite parts and throwing them up and people being like, I have to go see that now. Yeah, that would be that great. That would be ideal. Then it's like, I don't have to feed shit, I'm doing my thing, you know? It's yeah, like, but also, yeah. I don't know, it's like, it's still though, there's such a know. weird disconnect, because I, I I play field hockey and one, I, one of the women on a um, uh, neighboring team was like, we saw this person on TikTok and it's a, I almost said comedian, yeah. but that's not fair. But like a stand-up comedian. Yeah. And then they said, and when we went to see them live, it was so different. And I was like, it's a different type yeah. Of beast. yeah. You know, there. I don't know how else to put it other than like, there's a difference between putting together a quick little video yeah. and then seeing someone live on stage talking for the contractually I mean, obligated 45 minutes this is like the, to I an was, hour. I was having a conversation with someone off, like off the record where I was like, dude, it is so funny because like- Is this example, on the record? This is on the record, on the record. Uh, but no, it's like, you know, character comedians, that's sort of my background, and the character comedians, it's like, there are people that do it only on TikTok, but then they take it to the stage and you're like, oh, you have no idea how to fill a space, fill a stage. You don't right. know where people are gonna laugh because you've never heard them laugh because it's always been you alone in a room. Mm -hmm. Like it's really interesting to sort of like, and I'm sure it happens with stand-up too, where you're just like throwing jokes onto TikTok and then you do them in person and it's like, oh, you have no idea where this hits. You're just yeah. saying something that you think is funny and you don't know how to build off of like the crowd laughter, you know? Right. And I always thought that was really interesting that it's like, it is removing that sort of human connection. Yeah. In like a really shitty way that sucks. Yeah, and even, yeah. you could argue even for me if I throw up a stand-up clip yeah. that's not really connecting because yeah. it's like pre-done, you know? Yeah. It's like a... I don't know how else to put that because capturing stand-up is already hard enough. Yeah. You hope your special taping goes well and, you know. Yeah, and it's like every crowd is different. Every, yeah. You know, it's like, but that's the other part of it yeah. too. Like, and this has always been the case with stand-up, which is like an alt show versus a comedy club versus, mm -hmm. you know, the doing a vintage store in Brooklyn or getting on stage at Gotham mm -hmm. in Chelsea. It's like you do have to adjust in some ways. You know, like, or example for here in LA would be like the UCP crowd versus going up at the improv on Melrose. Yeah. It's like, typically the UCB crowd or these alt rooms want to just be like, what's up with your day? Tell me, make that funny. You yeah. know, like, just make it up. Yeah. As, a, and as opposed to the improv that's, that typically used to be, um, yeah. here's my performance, hard joke, hard joke, hard joke, and respect for that. So then you have to be able to sort of navigate both but now because, and I think a lot of people are saying this, crowd work has overtaken everything. Everything, yeah. Everyone's expecting that now. Yeah. And it's almost like to perform my act is a f too but it's like much a of a performance or farce for them. You have like a weird double-edged thing where it's like the comedian expects it to be that, but also the audience is like, come on. And I, I personally, as an audience member, never want to talk to anybody. I'm there to enjoy the thing. Yeah. I don't understand where people are like all of a sudden, like, I want to be part of this. I know. The only time people are typically part of my show is if they're like hammered and start yapping. I mean, that's also fair. Yeah. And then I have to ask them to leave. Oh, for real? Yeah. Now you do with hecklers? I, I, I feel like I've asked this people before, but I'm curious. People paid money and got a babysitter. That's Shut true. up. But I'm also very curious because I've asked people before, and most people are like, no, nah, but I, do you ever have something prepared for a heckler? Like, you're all that, like there's prepared? always like a curveball that you're like, yo, if this happens, I'm going to say this shit because I'm like I don't, preparing a joke, right? Like, you have like There's a, things, I think there's things that, yeah. you, that are tried and true that work. I don't yeah. necessarily have, I, have I have a few things that I've said that I go, well, I know that would work. But yeah, yeah no, no particular script. Again, I had a opener in Philly who was like, 
people encourage me all the time to participate in the feeding the algorithm. Like, yeah. I, 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 maybe I'm like just standing in my own way. I just. No, I'm with am you. Am I stubborn? I, I, I don't. Anyway, like they either. made me put this crowd work clip up. Made me. I mean, I, I uploaded it. <laughs> but it's like, and it did do well. And so they were like, right? Well, you know, not, it didn't go viral. Yeah. Okay. But the point is, it was like she wanted to show people how I handle a heckler. Now, it wasn't planned. I said something along the lines of, you know, I need you to shut up with your whole mouth. And so people are like, oh, that's very funny. It's like, well, I was just frustrated and that's whatever kind of came out of me. Mm. A thing I sometimes go to is I offer to sing them out as they're leaving. Oh, that's good. And so yeah. that is something that I will reuse. So that's I, good. for this woman, I sang in, um, Sarah McLaughlin in the arms of an angel oh as she God. left. So, yeah, sometimes I will do something that works. Yeah. That's fun. Okay, and so I improvise maybe some different lyrics, which depends. So parlaying that into like, I, I'm very curious, like your stand up to TV thing. And obviously I'm, I'm sure you were from experience because you said you crashed on couches and things like that. But yeah. what was like crashing like? like Being on it, that show you mean? Writing on it. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wrote, you wrote on it, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, I wasn't so. sure if you meant crashing on couches. No, 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 no. I mean, no writing what on the show. What was that like? Uncomfortable. Because yeah. I know you mentioned. Uh, like a burden. Yeah. <laughs> But like I know you, you talked about sort of like the the like oh I never felt like a writer. Oh when yeah. I got on there and like what because was because I like didn't go to school for that. I didn't go to school same. for any. So of it was that, like getting you know? through that like imposter syndrome. Like how did you deal with like the oh I don't know if this is what I am good at, but then obviously you are. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I also dealt with that for a long time, even mm. to the, over the last couple of years as I've tri as I've mm. stepped into more leadership roles, like supervising other writers or you know. Yeah. Why, why would I do this? Marching towards showrunner. I got Stop go. stopping on people? Um, <laughs> the po point is, how did I get over it? Honestly, sometimes I've read a couple people's recommendation letters of me, mm -hmm. like when I was need, when you're trying to like rise mm -hmm. as in level, sometimes your sample script, they're like, can anybody recommend what you're like to work with? And I've read one or two of those where I'm like, that is so nice. I guess that's how you see me, and I should try to see myself like that. Because, like, at this point, too, in life, it is so annoying mm. to see a friend be like, I don't know, I'm shit, or I don't know, should I ask? It's like, shut up and ask. Mm. Just ask, because there are people who are way more, or put yourself out there, there's people who are way less talented and just more annoying that <laughs> that get things. Yeah, you know, squeaky true. wheel can get yeah. the oil a lot of times. I've let people open for me that were terrible. You know, and then I'm not saying I let them do it again, but my best friends are like not saying anything. And then they're like, why did that person open? Like, you know, you can always ask me. It's like, well, you never said that. And sometimes it's just like a little, I had somebody young comic that I found and put on one of my Largo shows, reach out and say, hey, just wanted to say, I would love to come on the road with you at any point in time. I said, oh, sure. Okay, great. I'll keep you in mind. She's like, oh, thanks for not making me feel bad about asking. It's like, just you ask. Yeah, ask at some point. Just yeah. say, yeah, you know. I don't know. There's funny ways to do it too. Yeah. But so is that that would you be you kind of have to put right? yourself out there sometimes. That would be your advice to like up and coming comics. Though, yeah, right? I feel like, like I God, I didn't I get a writing did. job one time, mm -hmm. and I think to me what I if I had to pinpoint what it was, it was like that I was nervous. Mm -hmm. She said, "Do you have any questions?" I was like, "No," and it could have been as simple as me going, mm -hmm. "I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, I feel like." These are areas I'm really strong at. I'm a good joke writer. It makes me a little nervous to have to write 150 a day, but I definitely have the work ethic to do it, and I want this job. Like, if I had just said that, I, I, I don't, and again, I don't ever look back at that as, like, a regret because that wasn't the right path for me on that, you know? But, like, sometimes it's just, like, really being a little vulnerable, which is really counterintuitive to how Hollywood mostly works. Yeah. Like, so many auditions are like, let me act like I don't want it. You know, because desperation is yeah. like absolutely disgusting I mean, to them. Say that. They're like, oh, the time you you always get things when you don't care, and I just don't know. I don't think that's true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, there's obviously balance to anything in yeah. life, but like, I mean, Gerard Carmichael was in my New Faces class, and he turned down um, that. I think it was the New Girl role, and like, ever since, I feel like everybody was like shocked. Crazy movie. That someone would be like, oh no, thanks, I don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone's like, what can we give you? And I'm not saying that that doesn't have to do, it, there's a lot of factors there, he's very talented. Um, but I just mean, 
there is something to be said about finding the balance in, I really do want this and I'd love to be here as opposed to like, I need this and like sweating, you know, like of course that cannot be good. And so like, how do you find that balance now of like, obviously you're still doing stand up, but then you also have like established yourself as a TV writer and you, I think you said you do movie punch ups as well. Yeah. How do you like balance the two? Do you ever just go like, I don't know, this TV, like movie writing money is a really good money. I might not have to, you know? Yeah. Like, is there ever like yeah, Well, that sometimes tier? I wonder yeah. if I had just thrown everything into stand up, what it would look like mm -hmm. for me. Cause I, I'm happy that I can tour and I have mm -hmm. audiences that come to see me and it's great. Like I said, in terms of TikTok, to me the only nice thing would be about, would relieve stress on pushing sales so much. Mm -hmm. It's a gift to have, people have found you that wanna come see you and have it be a little more so that when you press, here's my tickets, it's like, we'll, we'll be there. Yeah. As opposed to like, hey, remember I'm coming and can you tell your friends? Hey, what's up, please, and, yeah. may everybody know. And yeah. is <laughs> the club promoting it, yeah. yeah. So. I'm thankful that I am able to do every part of it. Cause I don't know if there is one I would want to give up. But yeah, I do wonder sometimes if I had thrown everything into stand up, what it would look like. I'm so grateful I diversified my talents, especially to weather a lot of the storms yeah. of our industry and the world. The yeah, pandemic. And you act as well too. And like the, that? Yeah. the strikes. Yeah. It's like when we were striking, I was still able to tour. When we had sure. COVID and the world was shut down, I was still able to write. Yeah. So I am grateful for those things. And yeah, acting too is something I enjoy, but mm. I, think, I think I was pushed into all of those things by um, agents and managers. And of course it makes everybody have more money, which I think is a good thing. But at first it felt very like, I'm a stand up. That's what I do, that's all I do. Mm. Um, so I guess in some ways I'm, I am grateful that um, Hell yeah. everybody's a money grubber. <laughs> All right, so let's, uh, before we wrap up, I do have the speed round. I, I don't know why we keep saying 20 questions. It's gotta be like at least 10 or 15, but in, in this I'll area. I'll be counting. Um, so it'll just be like one word, uh, one word responses, one to like five word responses. Um, so we'll start with least favorite job you've ever had. I guess it was like running errands. It was like running errands for a woman out here. It was yeah. delivering flowers for like $7 an hour and they kept spilling. It was bad. Spilling, like the water? <laughs> yeah. I did a bad job. <laughs> um, most used emoji. I think it's that yikes face. Like, it's like the, it's the smiley where he's like. That. He's like, ah. It's yeah. like the angry teeth? Yikes? No, it's like, like the... it's like his mouth is like this, and his teeth are like oh, this. See, see, okay, this is the yikes. exact conversation I had with someone, because other people think that's excited. And I think <laughs> that's yikes or anxious. Fairly excited, rabid, like okay. with excitement. No, <laughs> it's yikes. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh, current favorite TV show. <laughs> MTV's the challenge. Okay. Okay. Um, what else am I watching? Like, oh, I do like The Boys. The follow up is also a guilty pleasure TV show. I guess it would be The Bachelorette or something. The Bachelorette? Like that. Amazing. Something terrible like that. What kind of phone was your first cell phone? A Nokia. Nice. First celeb crush? Christian Bale. Hot. Okay. And Newsies. Cool. And Newsies. Open the gates. And Last see. movie that made you cry? Fall Guy? Fall Guy? Yeah. I guess there is, it's pretty sweet. Yeah. yeah it's a sentimental to I'll it. I'll cry at anything. Right? Uh, favorite website that no longer exists or you don't visit anymore? RateMyProfessor.com. RateMyProfessor.com, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Do you know what a JoJo Siwa is? Yeah, okay, I mean, yeah. I know who, the, it's a person. Yeah, just yeah. curious. Okay. I, I frame, frame it that way because they don't, I want to hear what they think it is. Do you, you know? know what a JoJo Siwa is? Just in case you don't know, you'll be surprised. It's a you'll human. <laughs> yeah, I knew it was a dance person yeah. or like a dance that's mom true. That's, star. Yeah, that's true. And then now she seems like more of a gremlin. Um, a best fast food restaurant and what is your order? In and Out Burger. Amazing. And I just get a cheeseburger easy onion with fries. And then sometimes if I'm in the mood for a sweet treat, I'll get a chocolate or a vanilla shake. We love a sweet treat. Yeah. This is a sweet treat household. Yep. Um, <laughs> does ASMR make you uncomfortable? Yes. If you could meet any comedian dead or alive, who would it be? Robin Williams. Amazing. We have the same birthday. Obviously, I'm like whatever many years younger, but July 21st. Many. Whatever many years younger. Okay. You know, whatever. <laughs> Wait, July 21st? That's my birthday. Mine's April 9th. Whoa. My, I'm Beth Stelling, by the way. We're really close. <laughs> <laughs> you thinking my birthday is July 21st? That's Robin Williams' birthday. <laughs> oh, you thought I was saying your birthday? No. <laughs> Robin Williams and I are born on the same day. <laughs> uh. <laughs> However many years. <laughs> <laughs>
This makes a lot more sense. I was like, I've lost control of what's happening here. I don't understand. I thought, I don't know, you are like, we have the same birthday. I was like, what? <laughs> no, we we have the same birthday. Like, you said Robin Williams. I was like, oh, we have the same birthday, me and Robin Williams. Okay, cool. Well, the fastest of the game really got to me, and I'm starting to get tired. <laughs> I slept, on, honestly, I slept, I, I didn't fall asleep until 5. It's a wonder I'm even here. And I went to the dentist. Whoa. What a horrible day Are so Are you numb far. right or no? This has been fun. No. Oh, okay. Okay. That was a question. <laughs> Are you numb right now? It was weirdly early on. I thought on you here. were like, obviously, um, <laughs> many years later. <laughs> but we have the same birthday. I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yes, that. I'm not getting plastic surgery done. That's crazy. No. Um, <laughs> All-time favorite comedy movie. <laughs> this is tough stuff. Dodgeball? That's a great one. If you can dodge a wrench, yeah. Nobody um, makes me bleed my own blood. Nobody makes me yeah. Drake or Kendrick? Oh. <laughs> Why do you look scared? I thought it was like drink or can drink. And then you said Drake <laughs> or Kendrick. I think, do I not speak? I thought well, I speak clearly. I'm clearly <laughs> well, fading. Honestly, drink I'm or can something, drink. Like, my brain is cracked after you called me old. I'm going to change this one to drink or can drink. Drink or can drink. <laughs> can. Well, the next one is cartoons are real people. Cartoons. Thank you. Um, Please, I wonder what it's like to kiss a cartoon. Sorry. If you got, if there was a <laughs> biopic about any uh, famous person ever, and you were to play them, who would it be? And I was gonna play them. Yeah. Annie Oakley. Okay. Uh, describe... Is that where you thought I was going? I don't know where I thought you were going. Me neither. I thought we were gonna have like a real long pause. I was excited for it. Um, <laughs> describe your sense of humor in two words. Up, set. Up and set. Good. Okay. <laughs> Favorite social media platform from any time period. Favorite social media platform that ever existed. Ever. From whatever year they started to right now. <laughs> I guess Instagram. Instagram. And then who is the funniest person you know? It doesn't have to be a comedian. Just funniest person you know. My boyfriend, Adam Newacek. He's going to love that. <laughs> and, He's running uh, LA. And uh, <laughs> do you have any plugs before we sign off? I have a website. Cool. <laughs> it is? It's called BethStelling.com. Also, I do have a special out on Netflix. It's called If You Didn't Want Me Then. And I have an HBO special called Girl Daddy. There's a half hour on Netflix, too. Some There's a half old half hour That's Comedy plug, Central. Bro. We've got all them plugs. On YouTube. Oh, I have a podcast. It's called oh. Sweethearts. That's on Boom. YouTube. Check it out. With Mo Welch. Thank you so much, Beth, uh, for joining us. Uh, cool. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe. Follow us for more content like this at Funny or Die. And a final question for my guest, one word answer, internet good or bad? Bad. Thank you so much, we'll see you soon.